Hey, you. Yeah, yeah, you. You want to see what a hundred skills sounds and looks like when they're all trying to go off at the exact same time because they've all been queued up by poor performance and they all try and cast themselves at the exact same time? I got you, bro. Hi, Zach. Hey, listen to that, boys. The game is not functioning. What the freak was that? Hello? Camera? Oh, okay. This concludes today's section of ESO's bad performance is giving me a massive headache. I'll move away from the camera now. Okay, so there are timestamps in the description of this video if you do not want to sit through all the fun stuff I do at the beginning of my videos. So having said that, let's talk. So about the build. This build is a lot of fun when it functions. I say when it functions because performance has been so horrible this patch. It's, uh, it hasn't gotten better since the last patch. It's actually gotten a lot worse. Anyways, there's a lot of skills that you need to cast on this build, and if you can't get them to cast, well, then you, you're just dead. But, um, I love this build. It's a lot of fun to be up in people's face and at the same time play it like a hack and slash build so I don't have to worry about too much. Though I do have to watch my management of my resources because, uh, it is a bit taxing on sustain with all of our healing, so just be mindful of that. And having said that, I give this build a 3 out of 5 stars in its approachability rating. It would be 4 stars out of 5 if performance wasn't so horrible and you could actually cast the heals when you need them, but unfortunately, ESO has uh, gotten worse with its performance, so um, that's where it sits. And boys, yes, we have a montage. So this montage is going to be a little bit slower paced than the montages I normally do, so expect that. Because in the montages I make for my builds, I do them to showcase the strengths of the build, so I take those clips and then I throw them in the montage. And this is a brawler blade, so it's all about taking damage, healing, tanking out of it, turning around and burning your opponent. And at the end of all this, we have some 2VX clips that were fairly impressive, so I decided to toss them in and work them into the montage, and I do really hope you enjoy it. Getting hype when I aim up. Elevating that game up. Stepping up to the competition. Only first place and that's how I'm living. I'm with it till they digging up my grave Eating all the things up on my plate Game face when I step up in the place I was born and when I watched the other day
Mr. Uh, Red, can, can, can you, Bam Bam, can you can you leave us to our clip, please? <laughs> Bro, we're about to clean up. And this man's over here just uh, always got to ruin something. All right. So currently, I have no points into magic, 54 points into health, and 10 points into stamina. I'll explain how you should shift your attributes based off of the food that you choose, but here are the stats of the front bar, unbuffed. Here are the stats of the back bar, unbuffed. Buffing up slightly, these are the stats of the front bar. And these are the stats of the back bar, you can pause if you need to see anything. And do note these numbers do get higher while in combat. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the consumables. Okay, so for our main food, or at least the one that I prefer, I prefer to use Lava Foot Soup and Sultrice. I like this as it gives me maximum stamina and stamina recovery, which really helps out with the build. If you're finding that you cannot sustain your magic and your stamina, or you're just having, mainly if you're just having trouble with magic, you should switch to Jewels of Misrule, and uh, this is where you would change your attribute points. So if you're planning on running Jewels of Misrule, I'd have 34 points into health and then 30 points into stamina so that way we can hit a reasonable health amount and have enough stamina to back it up. Also you could use Orzorga Smoke Bear Haunch, but Jewels of Misrule are cheaper. I know I haven't covered it yet, but since we are a vampire, uh, I tend to keep a few of these on hand. Corrupting Bloody Mara, this will instantly put us at stage 4. And I have its uh, opposite, Purifying Bloody Mara, which lowers our stage by 1. So that way I can have control over my vampirism on the go. For our potions, we are using the Tri-Stat Potions. You kind of need these. I wouldn't go with anything else, simply because we're using all of our resources on this build, so it's really good to have them able to come back with a potion. And it gives us recoveries for each of the resources as well. This is crafted with one Bug Loss, one Columbine, and one Mountain Flower. And no, we are not using any poisons on this build. So on this build, I am Vampire Stage 3. Vampire is optional, I would say, but let me explain why I'm Stage 3. So we're out of stealth all the time with this build since we don't have Cloak. We have Dark Cloak, we have the other morph. And uh, when our health gets low, it seems to be that everyone and their mom tries to kill us because we have low health. So we really need that mitigation that Undeath gives us. So again, I would highly recommend being a vampire on this build. Sure, it increases the cost and all that stuff, but it's definitely worth it. So on this build, big surprise, I'm a Khajiit. Khajiit would not be my first choice. My first choice would be Dark Elf, then I'd go Orc, and then Imperial. But we're a Khajiit, and these are the passives that we get. Robustness, increasing all of our recoveries. Lunar Blessing, increasing all of our max stats. And Feline Ambush, increasing our critical damage and critical healing by 12%. And making us a Hide and Seek Master, but we don't do a lot of that on this build. So for our Mundus Stone, on this build, we are using the Serpent. The Serpent really complements this build well since we're out of stealth all the time. We need a lot more roll dodges and we're blocking a lot more often. So having this extra stamina recovery helps us with that and it also lets us stay in the fight a little longer as well. Hello and welcome to the video. If you're just here for the gear, that's completely fine. Uh, I would advise you sit through the whole video as uh, Brawler Blade is much more than just some gear sets, but uh, anyways. So on our front bar, we are using the Hammer of Ashen Grip. It is a mace, it has a disease enchantment, and it is Nernhoned. If you don't know what Ashen Grip does, well, it turns you into a human flamethrower, which adds a lot of burst to our combo. On our offhand, we have another Hammer of Ashen Grip, so it's a mace, with a shock damage enchantment, and it is charged, so we can proc those status effects. For our back bar set, I went with Powerful Assault. On the back bar, we have a great sword uh, with a weapon damage enchantment, and it is Defending. I like Defending Overpowered. Even though we have a bunch of heals on this build, Defending still feels a little better. Um, if you don't know what Powerful Assault does, basically, whenever you cast Vigor, you get a bunch of damage, which is very nice. For our head, we have Balorg's Mask, meaning it is a medium with a stamina enchantment. It is impenetrable. A couple things. First off, I wouldn't run impenetrable as the trait here. This is just a leftover trait. I'd actually put Well Fitted on here. Second, the enchantment, I would run a tri-stat enchantment. And third, if I had Magma Incarnate, I would run Magma Incarnate over Balorg. But unfortunately, that is, uh, I have, uh, I don't, I don't have Magma. For our chest, we have the Curus of the Trainee with a tri-stat enchantment. And it is reinforced. A lot of people wonder why you want to run reinforced on the chest. Um, that's because the heavy chest gives you the most armor value. So we might as well bump it up as much as we can. One piece of Trainee gives us some health, which is very nice. Next up, we have Balorg's Arm Cops with a Stamina Enchantment. It is well fitted. As you know, if I had Magma, I would be running Magma, but Balorg's is what we would use in place of Magma, since we don't have Magma. 
For our belt, we have a Sash of Ashen Grip with a Stamina Enchantment. It is well fitted. It is a Sash, meaning it is light, so that way we can have all the armor weights on here so we can get more mileage out of the Undaunted Passive. For our hands, we are using Bracers of Powerful Assault with a Stamina Enchantment, and those are well fitted. For our legs, we have Guards of the Powerful Assault with a Stamina Enchantment, and those are well fitted. If I could afford it, I'd have a Tristat Glyph there instead. For our feet, we are using Boots of the Powerful Assault with a Stamina Enchantment, and those are well fitted. For our jewelry, on our neck, we have a Necklace of Ashen Grip with a Weapon Damage Enchantment, and it is infused. For our first ring, we have a Ring of Ashen Grip with a Weapon Damage Enchantment. It is also infused. And for our final ring, we have a Mark and Ring of Majesty with a Weapon Damage Enchantment, and it is swift. So I tried to use Wild Hunt in place of Markin because my target is always out of range. Uh, I just found that it doesn't matter. The target's always going to be out of range, so instead I just decided to keep Markin on because I just, I just accepted it at that point. If you were going to run the Ring of the Wild Hunt, however, I would have a Weapon Damage Enchantment on it, and I'd keep it infused, so that way you could, uh, you know, hurt people real bad. So for our skills, uh, on the front bar we have Whirling Blades. This is a very good execute ability, and it is called Spin to Win for a reason. Next up we have Camouflage Hunter, or Camo Hunter. Sure, this can pull enemies out of stealth, but we're not using it for that. We're using it because while it's slotted, it gives us Major Savagery and Prophecy, increasing our critical rating, which equals more burst. And also hitting someone from behind gives us Minor Berserk, so we just hit harder overall. Plus it also gives us access to Slayer in the Fighter Skill Passive, so we can get more damage. Next up, we have Healthy Offering. This is a burst heal. It is a very, very good burst heal. So when we use this, it does take a little bit of our health away over three seconds, but we gain Minor Mending, increasing our healing done by 8%, which is very powerful as it allows us to have a healing rotation. Next up, we have Surprise Attack, the Nightblade's second signature skill outside of its cloak. Uh, this is a very good spammable. It hits really, really hard, applies the Sundered status effect so they lose armor, and also stuns the enemy. Next up, we have Relentless Focus. We have Relentless Focus and not Merciless Resolve because we cannot sustain Merciless Resolve. However, Relentless Focus, while we have it active, every time we lighter heavy attack, we gain stacks. And upon five stacks, we get what is referred to as the Bow Proc. And when you use the Bow Proc on an enemy, since it becomes an offensive skill, uh, we get some big fat damage. For our front bar ultimate, I like to use Soul Harvest. I use Soul Harvest because not only does it give us 20% more damage towards the person that we use it on, but also afflicts them with Major Defile, reducing their healing received by 16%. The ultimate that you get whenever you kill something is nice, but we're not really using it for that. Anyways, we have this here. If you don't want to use this, you could use Dawnbreaker in its place, or you could replace it with Soul Tether, so you have Soul Tether on the front bar. On our back bar, the first skill that we have is Race Against Time. This skill is amazing. It gives us Major Expedition, making us run really, really fast, and it gives us critical damage. Um, also, it removes all snares and immobilizations from us and grants us immunity to them at the same time. You cannot really replace this skill. It's just very good in outnumbered situations. Next up, we have Resolving Vigor. This is a heal over time. When we use this, we get access to our powerful assault set, so we get more damage. And when we combine this with all of our other heals, we can shoot back up to full health relatively quickly. Next up, we have our Sustain skill, Leeching Strikes. Whenever this is active, our light and heavy attacks restore health and stamina to us. And at the end of it, it gives us a burst of stamina when the effect runs out. I like this because it really helps us sustain our stamina, which is very important because we're not cloaking. And we need to do a lot of roll dodging, blocking, and uh, yeah. Next up, we have Rally. This is another burst heal, but also a very loaded skill, giving us Major Brutality and Sorcery, increasing our damage, giving us Minor Endurance, increasing our Stamina Recovery. And like I said, it's a burst heal, and it scales off of how long the duration of it was active for. This is basically our icing on the cake when it comes to all of our healing power. Next up, we have Dark Cloak, which is uh, the reason this is a Brawler Blade. So whenever we use this, we get some health every second, over 5 seconds. We get a very good amount of health. This scales off of our max health, so uh, sitting at 30k gives us a very reasonable heal. And also, when we use it, we get minor protection for 12 seconds, reducing our damage taken by 5%, which is very good when we're under so much pressure. And for our back bar ultimate, we have Soul Tether. Uh, we can use this either offensively or defensively by jumping in a group of enemies using this and then switching to spin. Or we could just use this, blast a couple enemies, stun them, and then get behind some cover. Either way, it's a really good ultimate. If you have Tether on the front bar, on the back bar, you could run Barrier. Don't run the Undo uh, Morph because we already get Minor Protection. And I shouldn't have to tell you to get all your passives and fill them out. And make sure you check them because this entire time I was playing this build, I did not have any heavy armor passives, which would have helped a lot. 
in the outnumbered situations I was facing. And I'm an idiot because I did not have these filled out and now I'm annoyed. But anyways, uh, yeah, make sure you fill out all the passives. Okay, boys, for our champion points in the role player tree, we have Master Gatherer, Plentiful Harvest, Sustaining Shadows, and Steed's Blessing. For the Sweaty Tree, we have Fighting Finesse. If you don't want to use Fighting Finesse, you can use Duelist Rebuff, but I like Fighting Finesse because we have so many heals, and when those heals finally crit, they crit for a lot. And then uh, next up, we have Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, and Untamed Aggression. In the Potato Tree, we have Celerity, Survival Instincts, Slippery, and Sustained by Suffering. Uh, when you're filling out Survival Instincts, make sure you only put 10 points into Mystic Tenacity, so that way you can get a lot more usage and uh, duration out of your Survival Instincts. And also fill out all the little golden stars as well, but aim for the passives. So this is the combat stuff section, you know the drill, we just cover everything combat related with my build. So for the rotation, it's not very difficult at all, it's base it's a basic knife blade rotation. So you buff up, you make sure you're buffed up, and you get into combat, you open with a heavy attack into a surprise attack. Normally this will stun the opponent, but you'll probably be facing him since you're a brawler blade. So a heavy attack, surprise attack, then you just repeat that until they get low enough on health that you can use spin to win on them. Or your bow proc gets ready to go. In that case, you'll use the bow proc and it'll hurt them and then you just keep repeating. And for the big boy combo, what you're going to do is you're going to want to make sure your soul harvest is ready to go for one. Second, you want to make sure you have max stats of your relentless focus. Then you're going to light attack in cap and then immediately after follow it up with your bow proc and that should deal some big fat damage. So like I mentioned in the skills and abilities part of this video, there is a healing rotation. So it goes as follows. First off, you're going to be on your front bar normally when you're taking a lot of pressure. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to press your healthy offering. What this will do is this will burst heal you and it also give you mending. So what you're going to do after that is you're going to swap bars. Normally you'd be holding block by this point so you can mitigate some damage. That or you roll dodge. Then you're going to immediately go into dark cloak, vigor, and if you need it, you can use rally if it's ready to go and that's your healing rotation you don't have to repeat this you can spam skills if you want but i mean it's not going to be as effective as having a you know general rotation set in stone so yeah so when it comes to surviving on this build like you saw it's all about the healing power that we have on this thing we cannot face tank like six or seven people but we can face tank about two or three at a time uh, given if their damage is relatively manageable if we're facing a bunch of uh zilla blades then uh rip um anyways um uh, Make sure you make good calls with this build as well. You gotta use your brain. You gotta make sure you're using your heals in the right moment. And keep your dark cloak up because uh, it gives you mitigation as well as healing. So having that up while you're in combat is very important. And also know which calls to make. Jumping into a group of 11 enemies and trying to use soul tether and spin to win won't work. Because you'll get one of them and then the rest of them will just surge you down. And you'll die and it'll be very unfortunate for you. So yeah, if you want more tips and pointers about how to play Nightblade and general stuff for combat, uh, you can go check out the other combat stuff section in my other build videos. Because I feel like I did a pretty good job there explaining them, but um, here's what you need to know. Well, you made it. All the way to the end of the video. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Not a lot of people make it this far for some reason. Like, it's for some reason very difficult for people to make it this far in the video. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video. I'll have some stuff in the description that you should check out, so you can go ahead and look there if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to, but um, you could if you want. And I have brought to you the highly requested Brawler Blade, which a lot of people have been asking me to make, so I do hope you enjoy the build. I had fun playing it. I wish lag was not as bad as it is, because honestly, this build has so much potential outside of lag. It's just sad to see the game in such a poor state. Man, if you watched the last two streams that I did over the last two days, you would have seen how angry and frustrated I've gotten with the game in real time. Just as a gradual progression of frustration because the game just does not function. I can't swap bars in time. I can't cast skills. They don't go off. Like, daggum, people rubber banding all around the map. It's a nightmare. But uh, I still love this game. And uh, for the few good moments I do have, it's worth coming back to. For some reason, Zenimax is good at that. They really should fix this game. I love you guys. Have a good night.